Hey everyone, my name is Eddie Joe. I'm an intensivist, and the article that I'm going to be taking apart today is titled Balanced Crystalloids versus Saline in Critically Ill Adults, a Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis. This article was published on the 31st of July of 2019. Today is the 4th of August of 2019, so it's brand spanking new. Now, this is my interpretation of the article, and I may likely be making some errors. They did a lot of statistical jumping jacks in this article, and I'm not a statistical genius. I am a boots on the ground bedside doctor trying to do the best for my patients. Now, if you learn absolutely anything, please hit the like button. It helps the YouTube algorithm promote my page, and therefore, these articles get to more people. Think about it as a way of you paying me for the work that I do, even though I don't need money from this necessarily. But if you like it, learn something, hit the like button, it helps the channel grow. Also, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter. My handle is at, at EddieJoeMD, and the links to this article as well as many other articles are on my website, EddieJoeMD.com. Now that that's all over with, let's go ahead and get started. First thing, also, Thanks to the Annals of Pharmacotherapy for publishing this article. Thank you to all these great researchers, uh, pharmacists, physicians, etc., who helped contribute to this article. I know how hard it is to do an article. I've done one and uh, (laughs) probably won't be doing any more again. Funny thing for the Annals of Pharmacotherapy, if you guys are watching, this needs to be in bold over here. The methods and the results also need to be in bold. Now, that's just me being a pain in the butt. Really? Thanks for, for everything you guys have done. So let me just go over here and let's go to where I've created a little bit of real estate for myself. Excuse me as you bear with me here. Let me go, I do this all on the iPad. And let me get my little highlighter out, put it to the setting I like it, and let's make some stuff in red. Now the purpose of the systematic review meta-analysis was to determine the effect of crystalloids which the balanced ones are plasmolite, also called normosol. Now, these two these two fluids I discussed in depth on my YouTube page. There are plenty of videos you can check out what's in them. Plasmolite is made by Baxter. Normosol is made by Hospira, I believe. And then LR or uh, Ringer's lactate. Those are what's considered the balanced crystalloids. And then saline is saline. I don't think I need to describe that any, any more in depth. They reviewed data, even though this came out in 2019 in July, they reviewed the data up to July 2019. So therefore, great job of getting this out in a quick, quick manner. And they looked at a total of, well, they looked at hundreds of eligible articles, but they picked 13 in total, of which eight of them were randomized control trial or or cluster randomized control trial, and five of them were observational trials. Please bear with me with my handwriting. It's atrocious, but here we go. One of the things I liked about this in general is that they got a total of 300, excuse me, 30,950 patients when they included these 13, these 13 studies. That's a, that's a lot, a lot of patients. Okay. So here are, here's that M listed. A little, a little bit of um, quick statistical analysis before we go in any further into this article, you're going to see that their endpoints, their results, are mostly described in risk ratio. And risk ratio and relative risk are basically the same thing. And if the risk ratio is equal to one, that means there's no difference between the two interventions. If the risk ratio is greater than one, it means that one of the interventions is worse than the other. And if it's less than one, then one of the interventions, the one that's being looked at, is better. In this case, since we're looking at balanced crystalloids versus saline, if you just take a quick glance down here, you'll see that the risk ratio is 0.86, which is better. 0.64, as I go through it, 0.94. The 0.94 is not statistically significant because the confidence interval crosses the number one. Okay, guys, then when they're talking about acute kidney injury, it's 0.91. You know, you're just seeing that in most cases, the relative risk or the risk ratio is better for patients who get balanced crystalloids. That's my little spoiler alert with the full spoiler. But what were their outcomes that they looked at? So they looked at a primary outcome, which was mortality. In this case, they used this uh, parameter called hospital mortality, which was 28 to 30 day mortality. 
Then there's secondary outcomes, which is, and this one was statistically significant. So there was less mortality if you used balanced all solutions versus saline, which is great because that's what we wanted to find with this study. We're, we're gonna get into everything a little bit more. Let me just go ahead and get rid of this over here. Goodbye. Their secondary outcomes is what I'm gonna break down a little bit more, okay? So their secondary outcomes was the hospital mortality, ICU mortality, also ICU length of stay, hospital length of stay. Some people don't know what LOS means, length of stay. It's also level of service, also comes, you know, it's also for other things, but in this article it's for that. Then patients who developed new acute kidney injury, place patients who developed acute kidney injury that then needed renal replacement therapy. Also mechanical ventilation free days. And this is important. And then changes in serum chloride. Okay. Now, when we go ahead and we look at the at the hospital mortality, they did these other things called random effects and fixed effects and whatnot. I'm not going to go into all that statistical stuff, but they did find that that using balanced salt solutions did decrease hospital mortality. It also decreased ICU mortality. So fewer people died just because of the IV fluids that were chosen. This is huge, guys. I don't understand why people just blindly go for it towards a normal saline if we have this data that using balanced salt solutions, not for necessarily everybody, there are people who would benefit from saline over the balanced salt solutions, but if you're seeing that it decreases hospital and ICU mortality, then why in the world would you just only use saline? That's, that's kind of the point of all this. They did find that there was no difference in the ICU length of stay and the hospital length of stay. Now, there was a decrease in acute kidney injury when you used, um, when you used the balanced cell solutions. And this is good because it saves people's kidneys, but also having less acute kidney injury saves the hospital as well as the patients and therefore the taxpayers and the insurance companies, it saves them all a bunch of money. Because every time you have a case of acute kidney injury, what do you need to do? Well, you need to go ahead and call the nephrologist. You don't have to, but you know, a lot of people just go ahead and do this. Then you need to work it up by checking the urine lights. You also need to get a renal ultrasound. And all this stuff just costs a ton, a ton of money. And if you can save some money by having less acute kidney injury and justify it by spending a little bit more money on the IV fluids, hey, I think that might be an appropriate trade-off. Now, they did not find that the patients had uh, any change in requiring dialysis. And the authors go ahead and give some reasons why they think that this was the, this was the case. It, it showed a trend towards it, but it wasn't statistically significant. In both the fixed, fixed effect and the random effect, the, the relative risk was 0. Uh, let me go over here 0. 0.91 and 0. 0.93 which shows that it could be something that balanced all solutions would would make better but at the same time the confidence interval wasn't statistically significant so therefore you can't say that it actually worked and that's the important stuff behind statistics now mechanical ven ventilation free days it increased the amount of free days i know that this seems like a little bit weird when they call it mechanical ventilation free days but when you use balanced salt solutions, people are on the ventilator for a fewer duration of time. And then the mean duration was 0 0.31 days. So think about a third less day being on the ventilator. This is in general. Some people got more, some people got less. But in general, this would be something that would be good for the patients. Because anytime you're on the ventilator, you have, first of all, the patient being miserable. Because you got to think about your patient first. In addition, you think about all the opioids and other medications you have to use for sedation, all their adverse effects all the adverse effects of the tube, ventilator associated pneumonia, the cost, the cost of the RTs, the cost of the nursing staff, uh, the nutrition, you know, all these things are very, very, very expensive. When you think about the cost, excuse me, the cost difference between a bag of saline and a bag of plasma light possibly being a dollar depending on your facility, I mean, is that really worth it for you? I don't know. That's, that's for you to decide clinically. And last but not least, there was a change in, uh, there was a difference in serum chloride that was approximately 7.4 milliequivalents per liter. Okay, and then this is important, and that was the random effect, the, the fixed effect was 4.9 milliequivalents per liter. 
But this is important, and, and I think that this may tie in to the mechanical ventilation free days over here, simply because, um, let me just see here. Okay, sorry, I got stuck here. Because patients who uh, become hyperchloremic develop a hyperchloremic metabolic acidosis, and these people try to compensate by becoming tachypneic to blow off more CO2. So if I have a patient who is huffing and puffing because they're trying to blow off their CO2, when I'm putting them on pressure support, they're gonna be breathing, and this is a hypothetical, if they're breathing 24 to 26 times a minute, my likelihood of extubating them is gonna be smaller than if somebody's just breathing 16 to 18 times a minute on their pressure support trial. So this hyperchloremia may be, you know, being, may be a, a difference maker with regards to this mechanical ventilation free days. In addition, hyperchloremia is known to cause acute kidney injury. I discussed this at length on other posts here on my channel and on my, on my Instagram and on my website. So if, you, if you're curious about hyper, how hyperchloremia causes a, a metabolic acidosis, as well as acute kidney injury, you know, the data's there. You, you could go and find it. Overall, I hope you enjoyed this article. I thought it was a good article. Once again, hat tip to the authors. This abstract did really, not, really did not do any justice to the article itself because it only gave a couple endpoints. Um, but all in all, I didn't discuss, you know, this a lot more of the endpoints that I brought up in this talk. So I hope you enjoyed it. Leave a thumbs up if you did. Thanks for checking out my work. Have a great day.